Air is such a drag. Okay, that's a bad dad joke. I do lots of those. But anyway, the point is, is air really is a drag. When you're cruising on the highway at 70 miles per hour, air is constantly pressing against your car. That's why you have to keep your foot on the gas. So you're using all this gas not to go faster, but just to fight friction. What if we could get rid of all of this friction? That's just the idea behind a hyperloop like this. The air has been pumped out of this clear glass tube, and now the train can just fly forward without any air resistance, without any friction from air. By the end of this lesson, we'll know all about this sort of friction. Let's learn. Let's start by reviewing our lesson objectives. First, we'll learn the definition of kinetic friction. Basically, it's the friction force on things in motion. Then we'll learn the equation for kinetic friction. And lastly, we'll learn to calculate kinetic friction. We'll put that equation to use. First up, what's the definition of kinetic friction? Well, it's the friction force acting on an object in motion. So in this example, we have a dog exerting a forward force the force of the dog. And what is it doing? It's pulling a boy on a sled, which is pretty epic. The friction force is going to resist that motion, so it's going to point to the right. And because they're in motion, this is an example of kinetic friction. But I think you can see that it looks pretty similar to our static friction case. And so does our equation. Here's the equation for kinetic friction. Why don't you pause the video and see if you can remember what each of these variables are? Well, the first variable there, f, for kinetic friction, it's just the force of kinetic friction. And we often drop kinetic friction and just put a little K there. The N, just like in our previous study of friction, is the normal force. And the normal force, remember, is related to the weight of the object. So here our boy has a weight and it presses him down into the snow. He would just fall into the snow if there wasn't an equal and opposite force pushing back up. Remember that weight and the normal force on a flat surface like this are equal. And we'll use that to solve problems in a second. This mu thing is the coefficient of kinetic friction, which is just a measure of the strength of the friction force based on the surface. We've looked at this for static friction. Here are a few different surfaces interacting and the coefficients of static and kinetic friction. For example, rubber on concrete has a coefficient of static friction of one but a coefficient of kinetic friction of just 0.7. Notice it's smaller. For wood on wood, the static friction is 0.5 and the kinetic friction 0.3. Again, the kinetic friction coefficient is lower. Lastly, for ice, we see a kinetic coefficient of 0.03. And this is just generally true. The coefficients of friction for static is greater than for kinetic. And we can write this like this. Mu s is greater than mu k. All right, let's go ahead and practice calculating kinetic friction. This problem says a 25 kilogram boy is dragged at a constant speed on snow. The coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.05, which is quite small, right? Because there's not much friction between a plastic sled and snow. That's what makes sledding awesome. What is the force of friction? Well, we'll start with our equation, which says that the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force gives you the force of friction. Here's the steps we'll follow. First, we'll find the normal force, and then we'll calculate the force of friction. Well, let's get right to it then. Let's find the normal force. How do we do that? We have to remember that the normal force is equal and opposite to weight, and we actually have all the information we need to to figure out the force from the weight of the boy. So remember, the normal force and the force of weight are equal, and weight can be calculated as mass times gravity. So we can say that the normal force is equal to mass times gravity. The mass of the boy is 25 kilograms, and the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. And so we get 25 times 9.8, or 245 newtons. We won't round for sig figs until the very end. So now we're ready to actually find the force of friction. We know the coefficient of kinetic friction, it's 0.05, and we know the normal force, it's 245. So we plug those both into our expression. When we multiply 0 0.05 by 245, we get 12.25 newtons. 
Now, since we only knew the coefficient of kinetic friction to one sig fig, we'll round to just our first sig fig and round that to 10 newtons. Now it's your turn. Here we have an 18 kilogram sled and it's dragged at a constant speed on turf. The coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.22, higher here because dragging a sled on turf is a higher friction circumstance. What is the force of friction? Pause the video and give this a try. Were you able to get it? Here's how we did it. Once again, we found the normal force by knowing the weight. And then we plugged in the normal force and the coefficient of kinetic friction to calculate the force of friction, which is 39 newtons. What have we learned? Well, we learned the definition of kinetic friction, which is basically just the friction force acting on something in motion. We learned the equation for kinetic friction, and then we learned to calculate kinetic friction. We put that equation to use. Hey, hey.